Back in the late 1980s, the Roland uh, uh, TV303 synthesizer was crowned the undisputed king of acid house music and long may it rain. Until the more recent years, we've had a plethora of imitations and clones inspired by uh, the original synthesizer. Um, now we have the Donna Music B1 bass synthesizer, taking the 303 concept, uh, making it more elegant, and dare I say, stylish. There's a much improved interface and onboard saturation and delay. So could this be the new king of uh, acid house music? So here it is, the Donna B1 synth bass and sequencer. And they did send me this unit, but nobody's censoring what I say, but I guess they don't have to because it's pretty much all good here. They did ask that I link to the site in the description, so do take a look down there. And I'm not being paid, I never am. The channel's funded by my Patreon, so take a look at that if you want. And I also get what little YouTube advertising revenue finds its way back to the creators like me, which isn't very much. And I must admit, I'd never heard of Donna Music before, and it appears they're quite a large company with four brands selling electric pianos, drums, MIDI controllers, violins, ukuleles, and saxophones. It seems they're dipping the feet into the synth market. So it's not a one-man band boutique company, which is probably why it's coming in on the DonnaDeal.com website at $170 once you've applied the discount code. And using the UK version of the site by clicking on the Union Jack up here, we get it at about £178 plus shipping or in the EU. So in France, it's €199. Euro. So a very good value kickoff compared to prices of used TB303s. So check out the site and make sure you apply the discount code. I did notice that you can't apply more than one code in the checkout at a time. So I think these are probably the lowest prices you can get it for at the moment. Okay, so that's Donna. And before I get stuck in, it's come to my attention that people don't realize the music are right on the intro to a lot of my videos is made by the synths I'm actually demoing. I thought it was obvious, but apparently not. So before I kick off with the review, I use this to create all the synth tones in that daft little intro track. Uh, here's the bass sound. The donk, what did I make with the donk? I think it was a bit more resonance, wasn't it? Something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, put some saturation on it. Whoops, turn that down a bit. There's your donk. And here's the acid line. And some of you might recognize that as being lent or completely copied from Higher State of Consciousness by Josh Wink. Uh, and it's got loads of those in here. So if I just place through with some of them, let's just go through pattern one. So 
So yeah, you can do 303 style tones. Whether it's exactly the same as a, a TB303, I couldn't tell you as I don't have one. Not a lot of us do, do we? But it's definitely got similar tricks up its sleeve. And I'll go into all that in a minute, but let's just take a look at the hardware first. It's an all plastic construction, so it's quite lightweight. I thought it was gonna be a bit heavier, actually. It's the same look as my MacBook Pro, my sort of new graphite gray one. I thought it was gonna be much heavier than it is, but it's quite lightweight, but it's not badly made in any way. It is plastic, but all the knobs feel like, well, they feel like typical knobs and switches that you get on, on, on lots of things. Got no concerns with it whatsoever. I did think it had a battery compartment because it's at a slight angle. Do this. Um, let's try and focus that. You can see it's at an angle and I thought there was room for batteries here. Well that was the design choice so that we can have the MIDI in and the MIDI out full, five pinned in at the back. We've got a USB-C which is used for MIDI and for updating as well on the app which I'll show in a minute. The only way you can power it is with the DC 9 volt in, got an on off switch as well and we've got uh, a main out which is a full sized, I think it's TRS, I've got TRS in there anyway. So yeah, all in all it looks and feels like a very nice thing. If we put it into this edit mode you can see all these keys light up. Um, I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, but it looks quite nice. Sort of like a um, blue fading out to the top of the keys. And that's to indicate what step you're working on. And you can also see here that the step number is on the LED panel. But let's take a look at the interface. On the top we've got the synth controls, the main synth controls here. And you'll recognise these as the same as what you've got on a TB303. We've got the wave selection. Let's just turn the cut off up and have a little play, turn the saturation and decay off. Got the wave selection, got pitch, cut off, resonance, the depth of the envelope, the envelope decay, and an accent knob as well. We've also got saturation and delay on this that you don't get on your standard TB303 or on many uh, emulations either. Master volume, and then we've got some jack points here. We've got an auxiliary in. We've got headphone in and we've got sync in and sync out. So you can sync it up to your Eurorack stuff if you want. This keyboard gives us 16 keys, which is 16 steps. And as I've just showed you, if we go into edit mode, these are the 16 steps we get in each pattern. We don't have a song mode when you saw me just flicking through the patterns there. That's how you'd play a song, just doing it manually. It waits till the end of the 16, until it plays the next one or the end of the pattern before it plays the next one. And when you turn it on, there's a few key combinations that you use in order to do things like change the MIDI channel. Um, just take a look at the manual here. It does come with a paper manual, which is very handy. You can see we've got different key settings for multi-trigger, key priority, factory reset, factory reset and erase all patterns, MIDI channel and the clock source. Got internal, DIN, USB, or trigger. And on the intro track, you use Logic Pro as the main clock. So the sequencer does clock perfectly to your door. And these all feel really nice, actually. Nice bit of resistance to them. Feels like a quality thing. On the right-hand side, you can see we've got the display here, and that's displaying um, whatever pattern we're on at the minute or the value of whatever menu item you're in on this little keypad. So this is basically the main um, sequencer or the main control section. Tempo, up and down. Got record and edit. We saw me going into edit mode a minute ago. Save the patterns, put in accents, gate length, ratchet, slide, arp, and hold. And we'll go into all that in a second. But you can access all these on the editor. The editor's downloaded from the donadeal.com website, but you do need sometimes the power cycle the unit in order to get it to work. Where's the power? Takes a couple of seconds. There we go. And we can see we've got access to all the global parameters. We've actually got access to the sequencer as well. If we just bring in group pattern one, there we go. Let's make it larger so we can see the whole thing. And we can edit all of these on a per step basis. We go in and we've got slide, ratchet, accent and rests. All the things that you can do on the front panel. Okay, let's have a little play around with it. We've had to listen to some of the sounds. Let's 
go down an octave. So that's as low as we can go. It's a square. Let's take the resonance off just so we can hear it. Nice. So as you add resonance, you lose a bit of bass. And you've got no sustain on this, just like on a 303. Got the natural decay. Sawtooth. Nice and fat, that, isn't it? As I say, whether it's exactly the same as uh, original 303, I don't know. Does seem to be lacking a little bit in top end, but then again, I don't know if the originals were either. It's got a centre indent on the pitch. Let's add some saturation. We'll turn it on to minimum. You can hear it straight away when you click it in. And you can play with the tone. Go into a square. Add in the resonance. Nice and dirty, what you'd expect. It's got a real nice sing to it, that resonance. Combined with that saturation. All doing exactly what you'd expect. Let's play with the delay. You don't have any way of syncing the time. So add some feedback. Really limited control, but it's got all the controls you need, really, for this sort of stuff. Just listening to it on its own. Let's take the saturation off for a second. Doesn't feed back forever. You don't get infinite loops on it, it's well controlled. You're not gonna get those space echoey effects from it. And while I've been playing with it, it seems well suited to um, acid tracks, basically. Let's just play a few more of these patterns. Thank <laughs> you. 
It just seems to work well with everything. Yeah, it just fits well with everything. Everything just sounds nice together. Let's go back to my Josh Wink. Play around a little bit more with it, just so you can hear it with something that you might recognise. It's almost like a reverb when you've got that much feedback on it and it's playing that quickly. Yeah, I like it. That works really well, doesn't it? Should we take a look at building a sequence then? Let's build that one. Let's go to one that I didn't really like very much. I think 34 wasn't very nice, was it? Okay, let's change that one. Press record and edit. We're in edit mode now, and I just got to type in the notes. So I know this one. I'm going to play that. We can see actually which note we're editing or using because, or, or recording because it's flashing. It's not quite right, still need to edit it. Now we're editing step one there. Move through the steps. If you press a key now, you change the note. So let's just try that. Actually, let's put, um, I don't know, throw there as one. So when we play it, so we're gonna go back to edit and change step one back to the G again. Okay. Now we wanna add some slides to that, back into record mode. We're on step one, we wanna slide. Uh, move to step three, we want to slide, step four. Notice I'm not pressing the keys, if I press the key, it changes the note. I think it's 10, 13 and 14. Let's play it. There you go, it's that simple. And we can go into each of the steps and do different things to it. So let's go back into record mode on step one. Shall we um, put an accent? Let's add the ratchet to something then. Let's go back into edit mode. Let's go to step. I think step six doesn't have anything else on it, just so we can hear what's happening. Let's put a ratchet on step six, play it. Ratchet, so we have two. There we go, edit again, so step six. Want to ratchet there again. Let's give it four. And we can change the gate lengths of each of those. So let's go back to step six. Let's take the ratchet off. To take that ratchet off step six, we go back into step edit mode. Back to step six and just turn the ratchet down to one. But let's change the gate length on six, shall we? I'm just using six, as I say, because it's got nothing else happening on it, so it's more obvious. So gate length is four, goes up to eight. 
So eight's effectively a tie. If we go into ratchet, um, sorry, edit mode again, back to six, and let's just make it a lot shorter, shall we? So you've got eight levels of gate length. Number eight is tie, and number one is very, very short. I think it's 10%. So it's, oh, let's not save it yet. <laughs> let's just go back in and take that off. Gate length one, let's turn it up to number four, play. And that's pretty much it, so let's save that. Save it, and we'll save it at 34. You can save it wherever you like. Now if you wanna see what that looks like, we'll come into the sequencer mode on the app. This is the old number 34 we didn't like. Let's read the new one. There we go. Uh, and that should be the same as my number 20, because that's the one I did earlier for that demo track. Read that one. Oh, oh, it's an octave higher, yeah. It should be an octave lower, but there you go. So let's just show you this very briefly while we're here. So if we go into one, read it. That's pattern one on here. So we've just loaded it from the synth onto the sequencer. And you do have to use these up and down buttons for all this sort of stuff. And that's not changing live with the sequencer. If I change the sequencer, I don't know, let's put a ratchet on the first note, shall we? So let's go control, enable ratchet, number of ratchets, four. If I play this, it's not gonna have the four ratchets on it. There you go, nothing on number one yet, but we can save it to the machine. From the app, oh, okay that, save that. There you go, now we've got the ratchet. So the sequencer doesn't upload live, you've got to save it and read it on and off the machine itself. And you can import and you can export files as well, but you need to save them onto your computer. So if I want to export that, save as. Another nice little thing this can do is you can transpose the sequences. If we play this, that's the center frequency. And unlike the 303, we've got an ARP as well. Put the ARP on. Put it on hold. We've got different settings for the ARP. We're on one at the minute, which is just up, down, up and down, random. This is up two octaves, down two octaves, up three octaves, down three octaves. Let's put it on three, up and down. Let's change the tempo. Change the gate length. Some delay. Okay, what else can it do? Should we have a look at syncing it up via MIDI? I've got the USB in here already. So I've just added it as an external MIDI track. Oh, I've got the ARP on there. We can see that I'm recording MIDI notes. If we record any of these, it doesn't do anything at all. We can see on these, um, the Dono One MIDI channel there that there's nothing coming in. And if you look at the top on the, on the MIDI input, when I press a key, there's something. But when I wiggle it, we don't get anything. Normally you'd see things happening. Here's a MIDI monitor. Notes on and off. No velocity. Wiggling stuff, nothing's coming in. If it was, you'd see streams of information coming in there. But what is interesting, if I play this. Yeah, let's tap that tempo. Da, da, da. What about one, B9, that'll do. So we're getting all those MIDI in notes from your sequencer as well. 
So I think that just about covers everything. What are my final thoughts? Well, overall, I think it's a great modern take on the 303 concept. It's lightweight, looks nice, and it's much easier to use than the original. Does it sound exactly the same as the original? I imagine if you sent this to a number of TB303 owners, they'd all tell you it didn't, but I imagine each of their units don't sound identical either. But does it have that bite? I can't tell you as I don't have one, but it may be a perfect Sonic replication. Who knows? But what it does have, which is possibly more important, is the same tricks on the sequencer. Uh, those little tricks, those glides, the accent, makes it into a 303 style pattern. But the ease of use is the big one for me, along with the addition of the distortion and the delay. Uh, ease of use wise, just sometimes I hit the wrong button and I've got to figure out what I'm doing. And that's because all the buttons are identical. Maybe the play and stop would have been good as a big one up here and the uh, octave up and down or the, the main up and down buttons away from the record <laughs> edit and play and stop buttons. But uh, it, it's not a big issue in any way. Um, is that a negative? Not really, it's just me trying to get my head around it. The only real negative I've got at the minute, and it's not about the, the synth itself, is the fact that the manual comes as this um, really nice handy hardware manual, but it is nice to have a PDF as well uh, online. And when I go to download the PDF, I get the app, but it does the link does say it's a manual and, a, and an app. But I think that's something that can be fixed extremely easily. So I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, please think about subscribing, join me on Patreon, ring the bell, all that sort of stuff. It really does help to support the channel. And I will see you next time.